Sup? <laughs> Jake Reed here. That stays in. We are doing some songs today. Just thought it'd be fun to take you guys through how Sean and I go about recording bass and drums together. First of all, it's just more fun to do it this way. I mean, than like sitting in a room by yourself, you know, play along with a track that's... The track's not gonna listen to you. The track's not gonna listen to you at all. You gotta listen to what's there and play along with that. But the great thing is wow. if the bass player is here, we get to listen to each other. Hello, on the show today. I showed up. Show. <laughs> People send us tracks. Sometimes it's just like a guitar, guitar and vocals. Sometimes it's just a keyboard. Our job is to make it sound like a song that people would want to listen to. Over and over and over again. Make it come alive. If they want live bass and live drums, they want it to grow. They want it to develop. They want to have a lot of, you know, life that you can feel rather than program. If there isn't any uh, temp stuff, that's what I find when we get down to our intuition and our skill set. That's what makes it special to do it together. There's this like unexplainable gel that forms in the groove when you do bass and drums together. I'm telling you. Yep. When I get a track sent to me where drums are done to an acoustic guitar or all this other stuff, and then there's just a gaping hole for the bass, that could be cool. The script is already written out for me. The kick drum pattern is not gonna change. And when Jake and I get to do it together, we can go, did that feel too busy? Did that feel like not enough? We can make changes, we can play off each other. I think the song develops in a more organic way, which is ultimately what we're after if we're gonna try to be putting live bass and live drums on something. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do before we just jump in and play the song is listen to the song. You gotta measure twice, cut once. And by measure, I mean make a chart. Two, three, four! Measure twice. Heck, measure three times, bro. So to you, is that eight bars on the one, is that a four and four because there's like a re-intro every time? Yes. Okay. See, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. How are we treating these sections? Is it a solid eight or a four and four? In which case, I might catch a ride on the wave of a fill you might be doing. That's right. But if you weren't going to do a fill there and I did, I would look silly. It's true. The last thing you want is to make everyone else in the band look silly. Okay. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Ready? Yep.
and seen. We did it! Nailed it, I hope. And that, folks, is how it's done. Just kidding. I... That was good. I feel... Good. Good start. It's always lake it up on the transition for me, which we did. We did. I would maybe take another crack at the bridge, a la executing something a little smoother. Obviously, there's like sort of a precedent for this sort of music, so we're not reinventing the wheel or anything. No wheel reinvention. Nope. All right, so time out. This brings up an interesting point. We are talking about a style of music, a sound that does have a precedent. It's already been done before. We're not trying to like make something completely brand new, but we're also not trying to do it exactly how it's already been done before. It's more like we're just doing a song that's inspired by the original. And this brought up a very astute point that Sean made about getting into character for the song. Sean busted out his Hofner. This is a Hofner from the 60s. But this is where you choose a snare. I'm just using this old snare I found somewhere. Or the first thing you might think of. It's an old Slingerland. For a scene, because you got a character. What does the song's character right. reveal to you? A really cheap drum. It's got such a cool sound for this kind of thing. What's your intuition? This is a specialized item. Yeah. But I'm hearing, hey, this song wants to be something that's got a heart that came from the Liverpool Beatles thing. The easiest way to get in that character is to not take another bass. It's gonna be, have to shape shift. Just grab the bass that makes me play and sound a certain way. It usually marries to a particular snare sound. Yeah. It pairs well. It's like wine and it's cheese, like wine, bro. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Like kibbles and bits. Bass and drums. Mashed potatoes and gravy. I was trying to think of another one, but I can't. Cats and dogs. Right, you get into character. When someone presents you with a blank canvas of a song and there's only chords and a melody, they say, well, where do you start? And I learned it from a great guitar player of the session world, Tim Pierce. Start with the simplest idea and execute it perfectly, if possible, and that will reveal, is that enough or do you need to add to it? And that's why I can know, oh, I want to start with a unique bass on this one, or I want to start with this particular bass, or if Jake's going to start with that particular snare, I already have a good idea what the starting point is. Simple first, and let's see what else it needs. This is a Hofner from the 60s, basically the same thing that Paul McCartney used, so it's going to give you a quick decay, it's going to give you this McCartney spirit, and it will also dictate that I play a certain way, because the strings are closer together, I tend to play with a pick when I do it, so it's sort of puts me into a place where it's gonna coax out different lines, different little patterns, different accompaniment, different transitional things than any other bass would. And each bass, like a snare, you know, you got a deep fat snare, you got something high and pingy, it's gonna kind of reveal, oh, these certain avenues are open to me and other avenues are closed. And the character, the tone, when you hit a whole note or a quarter note and it sounds a certain way, it kind of tells you, I know what I need to do next. It's either more or less. That bass has a very particular envelope to it. Yes, it's got a short decay, it's got a thump to it, you know, you can hear it acoustically. And it, it's gonna reveal, you're gonna wanna play some melodic things that maybe you wouldn't if you're doing some lower groove stuff. Um, I tend to favor this area of the neck because it's got the, the notes kind of bloom in a great way. Oddly enough, the low stuff isn't as rewarding as it is on, say, a P bass. So it makes you feel like, hey, I know a lot of the Beatles catalog just by picking up this bass. And it sounds authentic. It puts you in character, you know. Sounds matter when you're recording more so than anything else. Almost more than the part you're playing. If I hit a note and the sound is correct, everything else falls into to place. If you hit a note and it doesn't sound correct, if this is the wrong bass for the gig, I'll know right away. A lot of times there'll be a direction from an artist, you know. We do want to go, hey, what did you have in mind for this song? Because this is not about me or Jake doing your thing, it's about us achieving the vision of the artist and the song that we're working with and I like to get as much information as I can and if someone even whispers Hofner, I'm ready to go. Oh, hey, uh, got some flat wounds on there? Oh, yeah. Got some, uh... They're wound, but they're flat. You got your upper register, middle register, and then you got your cash register. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're not showing up at a gig where we're expected to take solos. We're expected to compose parts yeah. that should live on 
forever. We're just trying to make something, like you said, timeless. That's, Our playing has a certain timeless quality it really, to it. It gets better with age. Wow. Dare we do one more take? Yes. Scene. Rolling. You have a fix? Yeah, I didn't go to the bridge oh, yeah. where I should have. But I'd love to do one more and get it right. I want to make a quick correction because I'll just keep... Uh... We're circling in on it. Well, this is how it works usually, right? It's never been a one-take game. Honestly, who does that? I don't think it's encouraged either. There's no reason to have to anymore. No. We're not going direct to disc. We're not saving anyone any tape. No fixes. No punches of any kind. <laughs> Gonna be beautiful. Ready? Yep. That was a good take. It was a great take. I'm allowed to have a punch every now and then. It's true. We can, let's just do one more where we, uh... Be awesome? Just do a little more. Give them a little bit of a... If they search for some gold, they'll find it in this take. Here we go. Yep.
Sometimes it's just about warming up. Hey, I have an idea. What's your idea? What if on the bridge? Mm-hmm. What if we just go, uh, like into oh. like the like a like a do 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 like that kind of thing. Let me see. There's so many directions we could go. It could be that, or it could just be like, you know, more like the... I don't know. I kind of like both of them. Do we do a punch to see if let's they do, work in there? Yeah, that? let's just see what happens if we do that. All right. So How many is, bars? Here's a, let's do four bars before we get into it. Okay. Ready? Yep. But it it seems the guitar groove would have to change right. there. But as an option, if that's going to be replayed or something, they I have would it. Say it's valid. That's a good idea. It's a great idea. Let's do one more. The first one. I'm going to try going to the ride. Okay. And see if that makes of the first one. Yeah. Great. that the best. Let me try one more. I'll go even a little little crazier. A little more ringo. A little more ring in the go. Twist and shout moment. Twisting and shouting. Sick. Sick, mate. And that's how you turn in a track. That's a wrap.